124 times in the New Testament, which can mean someone who belongs to another or a bond slave with no ownership rights of its own. So I just wanted to throw the question um, out there. Like, what is freedom? Or like, how would you define freedom? If anyone would care to answer. Vincent, what do you think of freedom? Uh, to me, I think is now you are now free to be free mm -hmm. now. Thank you. But also, also last last Saturday, I wanted to to say about maybe being a, a scene of slave. Mm -hmm. So as I, I read like in the book of Judges, there's, there, there's, a, there's a man named Samson. Mm -hmm. So if, if you look at Samson's life, there's a, there's a point where he was, he, uh, the Philistines tried to use, to use him as a slave. And they were trying to trick to trick him through Delilah. So if you, if you read that book of Judges, so you see now how you can be a, a slave of sin. Go back to you. Amen. Thank you, Vincent. And there's, yeah, oh. there's something I love in now. Um, in that verse, just 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 that verse. Looking at that verse, there's something I love. Um, mm -hmm. And and I'm even as you ask a question and say, um, you know, what what is freedom? I, I think all humanity may not know what freedom is. They, we may have freedom from the sinful nature. Um, I I feel like when Jesus is talking about so if the sun. So if humanity don't know the sun, how can he even understand freedom? So even I think that this is good. Um, that verse is so, it's so really good now that only one person I actually introduces that word freedom uh, to a lot of people who is he's teaching that actually claim to be not, they have never been slaves. And, and I think when I look at the, the, the um, even I, I feel this is good because um, the children of Israel, they don't start from a freedom position. But even this verse right here, from them being bondage and slavery in Exodus, yet the son of, you know, like the first, son or the child of God being in Exodus, why does God promise Abraham that his descendants will have to be slaves in Egypt for 400 years? Um, and, and, and I think that is a place where, where, where I almost, I, I kind of like understand that when I see that words, the son sets free, I, I'm always saying, I'm just kind of saying that not knowing the son and the intention why he came. Actually, the reason why he came is for this. All of us are in a world with our own definition of freedom, uh, meaning sinful nature. Only, only Jesus introducing truth. If you don't come to truth, you will, you don't see the reason. You don't see the need for freedom. Actually, you will reason like that. The children of, Israel, of the children of Israel in in a prayer context, where they're asking, "We've never been slaves, because truth has was not there yet. The, if the truth is introducing to them, and trying to point to them, you actually are a slave, or you're a, you know you're a slave to what you obey, and 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 I think this is the spiritual side of it. Salvation is just that verse. Actually, it's the whole meaning of salvation 
because salvation even to be just earned or maybe even not earned actually as a gift it has to do with this freedom um and so if the son sets sets you free so no one else if 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 there's anyone else who has told you you are free or has or maybe has given you a mindset oh i'm free or if i get this i'll be free if i do this i'll be free uh, i feel the son is attaching himself to freedom and even i understood myself the other day i was asking myself as we left last week i was saying only a person who is free can even begin to introduce others to their freedom if you're still in the slavery of this you know where the position maybe of the teach of the where Jesus is teaching these people it, it will be so hard to tell others people be free from what you're not free yourself so i i, I love this because it's i i went home last week understanding that only Christ was so free to even claim as the only one who can set any other person free um you be free indeed and and i love the way he even he says that the disciples were following that and i think he paid that uh freedom not freedom because there's a freedom but there's a freedom of desires within us that makes us obey them that are more like worldly desires within us so i feel like jesus calling the disciples says if anyone wants to follow me must deny so the process of beginning the denying and finding the power of God helping us deny and deny and following Jesus I, I feel this is the truth that is setting free and and this is a very heavy statement from Jesus uh, identifying himself as the only um if the son and even he you know he recalls that and he said uh if the son set you free you will be free indeed meaning if anyone else set you free you're not free indeed if if i do anything else you know like oh the world has this freedom or oh, have this freedom i need to be free from this oh wait a minute is the sun did the sun set you free because if anything else set you free you are back back again to slavery you you, you may call it free oh i'm free but mm, no nah, you're not free if, if 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 i didn't read this like from a layman person who don't know anything else I wouldn't even attach the son as the only person who can set me free indeed. But coming to the truth, that is what I acknowledge first, that yet it is him alone and him only who can even bring that part indeed. You know that I add in that part saying you'll be free indeed. No, no doubt. Like you'll be left anywhere, you'll be really free. And a good examples of of actually the freedom that i i sense here and i always um i understand this freedom from the perspective of even how the disciples uh follow jesus um how jesus actually points to them and he, and he says um uh that actually actually this is even more even if you look how who he's actually speaking for he says this in verse 30 even as he spoke, many put their faith in him. To the Jewish who have believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching. So freedom is no, it is not just coming, oh, I'm free today. So if there's a certain teaching that you're holding and you're letting go another one that you were holding. Just from jesus view verse 31 if you hold to my teaching you are my disciples and guess what then a continuation the first time we hear that the the the, the, the set free comes in, in then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free when i when we read this a couple of weeks ago i saw a sequence i cannot just jump on there and say i'm free but i have to see how jesus lays it down to the Jews who have believed, key thing, first, before you say you're going to be set free, do you believe in him? Then Jesus confirms and he says, then if you believe in me, that which you were taught, that teaching, if you hold on to it, second, you got to be holding on to the teaching 
that you have believed, then you are really my disciples. So the disciples are people who are actually believe Jesus Christ. They are held in his teaching. And now they're not holding the teaching, but their teaching is making them be followers of Christ. So disciples, uh, discipleship comes in there. And then this is the people then he say, then you will, which these people who believe, who are holding the teaching of Jesus Christ, they have become his disciples. Then you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. And then now verse 36. You see the truth will set you free. Then look how 36 says. It is the son who is the truth. That sets you free. Anything else. So if the son sets you free. You will be free indeed. So if that truth. You believe. You hold on. You became a disciple of that truth. And probably that's the truth. You disciple others to become a disciple. That truth is the one that will set you free. Why? Because that truth is the son himself. Ooh. Right there, nation. Let me hold it there. Back to you. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Steve. As you were saying that, um, John 14, verse 6 came up in my head where it says, I'll read it. Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. So that first part. I, that's what reminds me that I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I was just like, he flats out says, what is the truth? That he is the truth. And you, if you believe him and if you follow his commands and just give it your all, you'll know what true, what the truth is. And with the truth, you'll gain freedom from it. Like, I was thinking, I was like, what is like freedom and it reminded me of um like what what is like our expectations as being free like normally like saying like oh physically and then spiritually like we may be thinking oh we're spiritually like physically free because we are not bonded by a, a person we're not kept to any kind of slavery but spiritually, we are slaves by our sins. And sometimes I feel like we don't notice that we are slaves to our sin. Like, it's like how um, Pastor Charles was explaining to me, like, you are a slave to your sin. Like, if a person is smoking and they're going out when it's, like, below zero degrees outside just to have a cigarette. Like, they're obeying their master, which is that addiction of smoking. And they are locked into that. And they are slaves to just that, like that cigarette, that smoking. And it just kind of got me thinking for a minute, like how spiritual freedom is really different from physical um, freeness of, or how we would, if you go to anyone out on the street, be like, are you free or like, like most people it's like, yeah, we live in America, you know, we're free, we have freedom. But even with like being in a place of freedom or saying we have freedom, do we truly have freedom in our hearts and our spirits, which that is the most important thing that we must have. It's not about the physical, it's about the inside and how you feel inside and the spiritualness of it. Because if you're not free inside, you're not free even in your outer, you know? So I feel like that really distinguishes that and you have to, it's like what you bear in the insight that comes outwards. So if you have anger inside of you, that will come out of you. If you have joy inside of you, that will come out and it'll show. So it's just how you, how you do things, I guess. I don't know how to say the correct words. Are. Does anyone else have anything else to say or just add on? I have something else to say. Mm -hmm. I have seen in the book of Galatians 5, verse 1, it says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm and do not let yourself to be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. So mm -hmm. this comes to bring me Jesus when he was crucified, he carried the cross. Yes. That cross. It's like a sign of cutting all your burdens. 
yes to set true. you free to set you free from the sin mm -hmm. but the sin do not let yourself to be burdened meaning like do not let the sinful nature to come upon you to enslave you from to enslave you back just stand firm with the word of god yes don't mm -hmm. let accept anything that is from sin to come upon you again. Amen. That's powerful. That is very powerful. That reminded me of, I'm trying, I'm trying to search it as we find it, actually. It is oh, Galatians 3.13. Like, Oh, that one. It's Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on the pole. And if you continue, he redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ so that we, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. So I feel like with that, it's just telling you like he didn't do this just like, or he died on the cross and died a, like a sinner's death and he was humiliated by it just for, oh, just not just only because the prophecy we fulfilled, yes, that, but because of how he did it for us to be free. He did it in order for us to actually have the truth and the freedom. And for us to be able to say that we are free in Christ and that we actually know what freedom is and what the truth is. Because dying, like, what, what was it? Pastor Charles is explaining it to me. That um, it's, oh, they say it somewhere. I don't remember where. But without blood, you can't be purified. So it's only by blood. And Jesus shed his blood for us to be forgiven. He was a sinless man and he covered all of the sins that we can ever bury future past present all of them and so with that i feel like that freedom we should take it more importantly because sometimes we may take advantage and like oh yeah we're free or whatever we have christ and we take it lightly but it doesn't I don't think we take it into deep consideration how powerful this freedom is because we actually have the freedom to say no to our sins and to actually like smack the enemy in the face and say, no, I'm not going to do it because I have Christ on my side and I'm not going to fall back into that deep sin that I once was. Does anyone else have anything else to say? Yeah, let me add also another, um, just I love that, um, that actually, Galatians 5.1, and, and, and look at it in NLT, and then I'll add, I'll NLT. Uh, cross Peter 2.16, it, it says um, in NLT, just, just, just something, it's almost like it, Paul comes out from discussing, and, and it's interesting because chapter 4, will tell you how like slavery comes and it relates to scenarios of 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 a free woman and a and a slave. Um oh they look at that. Um and actually let me just even uh, go there just a little bit there. Oh oh no this is it, it'll make me just kind of see that whole context. But he says, but you are now being persecuted by, by, persecuted by those who want you to keep the law, just as Ishmael, the child born by human effort. Persecuted Isaac, the child born by the power of the Spirit. But what did the scripture say about that? Get rid of the slave and her son, for the son of the slave woman will not share the inheritance with the free woman's son. I, I, that is a very nice session, you, you know, to go back and see the two ladies, how their son, one comes through freedom, one comes through slavery. That, mm, that's a very nice uh, in-depth thing to look at. Um, 
But look at that. Um, it, it says that uh, get rid of the slave and her son, for the son of the slave woman will not share the inheritance with the free woman. So we're almost getting something there that unless we're set free, there's nothing in slavery, anything worldly, anything sinful, anything felt. It has no place in the inheritance of God. So as much as we love this, which, we, you know, these, you know, desires, sometimes we don't realize they are almost, they are almost like fleshly bound or maybe seen in nature because of what it claims. It, it cannot share the same inheritance. But I love this, Clubbers, uh, that one. So, dear brothers and sisters, we are not children of the slave woman. We are children of the free woman. Uh, so, Christ, I want to just read this in um, and, uh, and in 5 1. And it says, So, Christ has truly set us free. Now, make sure that you stay free. Did you hear that? It. it has set you free and then stay free. Um, and, you know, NIV says start fun. And don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. And and he blinks that out. Um, then first Peter, I think that when uh, Vincent shared that, it was just a very nice uh, seeing that word being used there, freedom. Um, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Um, so stand firm. So remain believing. Oh, look how those actually look how that verse. Oh, I love that. Look how that verse ties with with the description of that word again being used in set free. Um, you see how it is for freedom that Christ has set as free. Stand firm. Now that stand firm, I see it almost at the same one Jesus is echoing here. In John 8, 31, 32, he said, if you hold to my teaching. And you see how you're keeping yourself? If you hold to my teaching, you're really my disciples. So disciples are standing firm to the word of truth that is able to set them free and keep them in freedom. So they are standing firm. They are standing firm. And, and they are holding to that teach. So that Galatians 5.1, I see when the word that set free is being used in Galatians 5.1, I see it also connect in 8.31 of, of John 8.31 where Jesus is saying hold to firm. So hold to my teaching, stand firm, remain. Um, so we, uh, he says stand firm, you know, stand firm with that truth. Then and do not let yourself be burdened again by the yoke of slave. And, and then First Peter, there's there's something else I see in there in First Peter. He warns us, and he says five First Peter uh, two. I, I like seeing the usage of that word free by various uh, places sessions because it will give you a little more. You'll see what the emphasis is. You know, stand firm, hold to my teaching so you can see now why what keeps someone free or being in freedom is what they are holding from what they're holding from and then they do not want to um, find that but look at these in in, in first peter 2 16 uh it says uh he he brings something else peter brings something else uh he says live as free men So the other one, you know, be firm, remain free, leave as free men, but do not use your freedom as a cover up for evil. Leave as servants of God. Wait a minute. How is that? Um, let me see that. And with another version, it says, for you are free, yet you are God's slaves. So don't use your freedom as an excuse to do evil. Nation, I'm coming back to you to tell. I just, so that way, I just want to hear what you're hearing there. Um, let me read it with the New King James. As free, yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as a bone servant to God. So freedom is to be 
a servant to be a slave to God. So the freedom which we have been set free, it's not for us to shout we're free. I think it's for the servanthood of being now being servant, born servants of God. So you're free to serve God. Is it didn't say uh, God tell the children of Israel or maybe tell Pharaoh? And if you see that verse, uh, did he not tell Pharaoh to go tell, I mean Moses to go tell Pharaoh, let my people go for what? That they may come and worship me. Freedom to serve God. Freedom to, to be a bond servant, but as a bond servant of God. So the freedom is not just for me, but it's, it gives me the access to remain a servant, a very committed, almost like a slave, like the way we see Christ serving God, or we see Paul serving God. Even Paul uses like a word like slavery, but I see how that usage of that word is being used there with an NLT. Um, it says, for you are free, yet you are God's slaves. So children of Israel, go tell, I mean, Moses, go tell Pharaoh to let my people go so that may come and serve me. Freed to serve God. I, I think that's what I see. The freedom is to serve God because now the warning here was leave us free men, but do not use your freedom as a cover up for evil. Leave as servant of God. So it calls you to leave servanthood. So, and that's why I think freedom is not just free. It brings you into the perimeter of how a servant leaves. There's these, the, these, um, these, there's a lifestyle required of a servant, and you're free to remain as a servant of God, but not to use freedom as a cover up for evil. Now, what do you think that, Nishai? What do you get in there? Freedom as a cover up. Hey, man, thank you. Uh, I was thinking how some people will use religion or like some people use Christianity to put like an um like an image of themselves. Like I was saying, do not use your freedom as a cover up for evil. Like people would just um use it to be like, oh maybe it's just to pleasure other people and not for themselves. Like yeah, they may go to church once or just attend a Bible study or say they pray and do stuff, but is it truly in their hearts or like is it truly in their lives that they apply to their daily lives like do they do it in private pray to god and fast even and read his word like i feel like it's like that whole intimacy that god wants like a relationship and he doesn't want you using it just like as an image like almost like a picture like a cover for a book he wants you to be the whole thing he wants you to be real with it and some people just use it as just an image to how only people would perceive them and for them to maybe just continue their sin and behind the backgrounds and just not or really apply it to their life they just will say oh yeah i'm christian but just don't possibly not believe but they would just like yeah i only do it because of my family do it or i only do it because i'm just so I want to look like I'm a good person and whatever. And, but I feel like it's the whole intimacy that God wants to have. Like he wants you to live as servants of God. He wants you to bear the fruit of the spirit. He wants you to be like a part of him, but seek him willingly. Like it's not forced because God is free will. So you're either choosing to be a servant of God or you're a servant of slave. Like, not save, <laughs> slave, I mean sin. So it's, you can't be in the middle. You will have to pick one or the other. And that's what I kind of get from it. Yeah, hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, nice topic there. So one of the things that I also understand about being set free, uh, not using our freedom to, to do some evil, is like, uh, the way Steve also said that, uh, you know, like the children of Israel. I think it's one of them say that. The children of Israel. Uh, you see, one of the reasons why they were set free from uh, the from the time from Egyptian rule and uh, you know uh, from the slavery is that 
so that they may go and worship God. That was the purpose. And uh, once they were outside the, uh, you know, the once they crossed over the Red Sea, now that determined that now they are free to worship God the way God wanted them to worship Him. And now the problem is that they used that freedom to now indulge in things that God did not want. You see, just like the way you're saying, Nisha, you know, God gives us, the, even in that freedom he has given us to worship him, he gives us that, uh, uh, you know, uh, that ability to choose. You remember he told the Israelites, choose, you know, choose, choose life and live. You know, he gave them the option. You know, today I've said before you life and death. So he told them about what questions that are going to, that will going to lead them to death, uh, you know, physical, uh, spiritual death, and also spiritual life. Uh, that in life it started, and he told them, hey, you know what, choose life. So uh, they went, when they were in, um, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, you know, in the wilderness, uh, instead of sticking to what God wanted them to do, then they started expressing their freedom of worship, uh, the freedom that God has given them to even start questioning the faith of God, you know, to start questioning, you know, uh, whether God is there. You see? You know, so that's the reason why the God wants us that has not used that freedom that he's given us from the slavery of the, you know, of the world, the slavery of the, you know, satanic kingdom. Let us not use that slavery even to come and start causing more chaos in the kingdom of God because of unbelief. So it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, and also you find that sometimes people use the freedom that God has given because now you are born again. Some of them end up using the same freedom to choose even to worship other gods because you see, they were out of Egypt, they were free. But then you see that several times God was punishing them because they were they had chosen even to worship idols, contrary to what God has given them, you know, directed them. So we always warned that let us use not use the freedom that we have to make choices which are not uh, godly. Because we are born servant, born servant. We just need to understand that we are under the logic of Jesus Christ. So the word of God, even in the freedom that we enjoy. Uh, you know, freedom from the bondage of Satan is enough to make us happy in even serving God. That's what happened. Amen. Does anyone else have anything else to add? Oh, I have something else to add. Mm -hmm. So I was asking myself, myself how do we stand free and not cover ourselves from evil? So I looked in the book of Daniel chapter 3, the way three, these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Bendeko. Uh, I, I, when you read that book, I, I see King Nebuchadnezzar set the idol God to worship. But those three men did not accept anything that King Nebuchadnezzar wanted. But later on, Nick King Nebuchadnezzar threw them in fire. But at the same time they were in fire, they were just saved and did nothing. That and accept anything that King Nebuchadnezzar wanted. Until that time, King Nebuchadnezzar wondered now what are the way they, he, he saw with his own eyes, the way they were surrounding in fire. So the way I, I could see this in the book of First Peter chapter 2 verse 16 is saying, do not cover freedom with evil, meaning that in the, if, 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 if freedom, if you are now free, not accept anything, even if you are now forced, not accept. However much, sometimes it can to maybe bad things coming upon you. So that you may now go. The evil is now forcing you now to do. But to you yourself, you need now to be brave, to refuse not to follow the evil ways. Go back to you. Amen. Thank you, Vincent. Like, I love that verse, oh, 1 Peter 2, 16, because I just feel like it tells you 
to live like it it almost explains or gives an example of how we can live as free men and be servants of God and um I kind of wanted to go to Romans 6:16 6, I just wanted to show that verse cuz it kind of just popped here I thought it would be a good example all the way to seven all the way to seven so i'll just read it it goes for we know that our old selves were was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been set free from sin and so i was thinking to myself like that last verse because anyone who had died has set been set free from sin and so I was just thinking about it and I was like by being set free is not by like death it is from the death of Jesus Christ that we are saved it's through his death it's through his crucifixion it's through his blood being shed that we are actually saved and I was just taking like a moment to just think about that and seeing like the goodness of that. So just just repeat that again. That when any man that has uh, has died has has uh, been set free. Just mm-hmm. read it again. Uh-huh. Read it again. So it's gonna be Romans six. So I read yeah. up to verse six. It says, "For we know that our old selves was crucified." with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been set free from sin so okay Uh, so what are you saying about it anyone that has died has been set free from sin Mm mm-hmm so just explain again the way you explained it. Okay. Like, so, it. Uh-huh. so I kind of understood it like from verse six. It's like it was through Christ's um I cannot say the word for a second. But it's through Jesus Christ's death that we are saved. It's through his blood that is we are saved. And ourselves, like all of our sins, he buried yeah. it all when yeah. he was getting crucified, when he was getting hurt, when he shed his blood. So it, it's for even the past, the future, and the present. Yeah. All of our sins was buried with him. Yeah. So once we accept him and understand what he has done for us, that we are no longer slaves to sin because and, he has already died to set us free from sin. Yeah. And also we also we have also died. So yeah, mm-hmm. that's nice. That's very very good because uh, one that's one of the, uh, the 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 verses that is very much misquoted. Uh, there are people who say that uh, you know I can live in uh, in sin, but if mm-hmm. I die, as in the physical death, it means mm-hmm. that I'm free from sin. There is one of the religions that hold on to that. So that is one of the key that you can explain. Uh, to anybody that comes and tells you otherwise because they say that anyone who has died has been set free from sin. So they don't connect from how, I like the way you connected it. That's exactly how you connect it. You connect it from uh, from verse 5 or 6, wherever you connected, wherever you started. started So uh, so there are people who normally normally say, you know, see, that if I die, definitely I don't have any sin. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. So they omit the part of Christ now. So it becomes a bit tricky. So that is very good the way you have explained it. It just means that, you know, once we have once we have died with Christ, because we also died with Christ and rose up again with him. So we mm-hmm. died to sin and we rose up again to the newness of life. So we are free from, uh, we, have, we, have, we have been set free from, uh, from uh, slavery or from the lordship of sin. Now we are under the lordship of Jesus Christ for life eternity. Yeah, that's good. So very good. You have actually explained it very, very well. So God bless you. Oh, thank you. It's all God. But that's a key. It's a very, it's a key verse, especially when you you meet some people who will always want to put you in that direction. Mm-hmm. But you have to, yeah, you can always, yeah. It's a, it's a very good, uh, the way you have explained it. Very good. 
Thank you. Thank you, Thank you mm-hmm. tall guy. Does anyone else have anything else to add about this and how freedom connects to it? Or just any other verse or anything that popped in their head? Yeah, let, let me add on that same verse. Um, I just I, I put those, you know, uh, two uh, highlights, those out uh, because they, they, they stood out for me. Our old self. Uh, I can't talk freedom in my old self and call it freedom. And, 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 and I think I love, I, love, I love even what Jesus was saying. Um, so if the Son sets you free, uh, you'll be free indeed. You want him to be crucified. You want that. If the Son sets you free, look what he's doing there. Because the burden of what you could be calling free that you didn't know it was a burden, it was your old self. And so, so if the Son sets you free, how does he do it? There's the crucified part. There's a part that he bore himself to, to even make you have that access of, the, of, of, of letting yourself, the old self, for we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away. So the body of sin, oh, this is deep. The body of sin, oh, Lord, needs to be done away. I, I, I just, that's a very powerful verse. You tell me the way I live, I need to, to get, to be freed from the way I live. That body of sin, because it's already a slave itself. It's that body itself a slave to sin. But it, it, it cannot be freed until they die. Until there is, um, you know, that acceptance of, 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 that nature itself in you is there is nothing good in it um so with him so that the body of sin might be done away with that we should no longer be split to sin because anyone who has died i feel like i feel we should be brethren that are dead <laughs> like like like, <laughs> like you're dead to this like oh you want to like the way actually like what vincent say i would say daniel was dead to the king request of what they need to be eat. They were dead to the delicacies. They 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 say we purposed that we will not defile ourselves. That you know you know when you're put in a position of where there is that where the body identifies the king found oh it's good to feed them this this and this and this but when you're able to say no feed us this I see freedom that is freedom that is a dead denying your old self. That is the self denying it. And guess what? What is not at the point where they stood firm, they became servants of God. Oh, look at how I'm tying those verses. It, they now they are able to be servants of God. Because the moment he purposed in his mind not to defile himself, what was he doing? Hmm, he was getting done away with this with the desire that you know that feeling of eating this food and this and this what what that wrong and, and it was dead in him it was dead in daniel and that was a position of freedom that is to me i was just just getting it from now that is a place of freedom why because they now they were it is that moment that they begin to open doors of being servants of god in a most challenging place why because they were dead they had done away, they had, or, or maybe so that the body of sin might be done away. They, that body of sin claiming what the delicate, they didn't have that. And I love that last verse. It just blessed my soul as you were reading. Who has died? In anyone who has died has been freed from sin. And, and, and you, if you look at James saying how sin comes, it comes from desires. That's desires that, you know, our own desires. So it is putting those old desires, old self away, being able to be even in a place of offered, offered by the king, and you choose to find to say no. Why? Because there's something in you you don't want to defy. That's the moment of freedom. That to me, it sounds, it, it, it looks nice freedom there. So that verse just blessed me as you were eating, and I was just milking it. I was just finding a lot of weight in it um, uh, that it is... 
truly dead to this body there. One who, who actually now the sun, if the sun sets you free, you'll be free indeed. Why? Done away with the body of sin. Done away with the craving of the body. Of or even our old self. You know, our old self is no longer there. Now you can find him being the most important person. You will not defile yourself. Why? Until that moment you opened the door, they became servants of God. And now they leave. They were holding, they were standing firm, as Vincent was saying, they were standing firm to actually remain, live as men who were free. They live free in Babylon. That's freedom, I'm telling you. They never wanted to long anything. They didn't even long anything, but they found themselves being led to the places where God wanted to. They were persecuted. They went through hard times. But I find freedom in a position that could have defiled you completely away and wiped you away, but they retain faith in God and remain free. That's to me is freedom. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Babylon, leaving that and being servants of the Most High God, to me that is a nice example of freedom. Back to you, Mitch. Yeah. Um, just to add on what Steve has said, Anisha, with the permission. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, in fact, yeah, just uh, yeah, yeah. Now when you're talking about freedom, in fact, it brings on uh, that example of Daniel Shadrach and Abednego brings a very good example of how we are expected to live. Like you see now, for example, um, um, dead. What are dead? You cannot respond to any external stimuli. I normally like using that. You cannot feel any pinch. You cannot feel any. It's just like uh, you know. Um, you know, um, you know, you you don't have any connection. Let me not go to the medical side. And let me just just a general, you know, the general, just a general, you know, observation. Of what happens? Like for example, if you have never smoked a cigarette, right, you are dead to the feeling of how somebody smokes feels. If you've never had, if you've never taken like coffee, for example, you are dead to the feeling of coffee, right? So the other thing is that you never miss it because you never even done it. You never even time you done, it. or you never miss anything you have never done. Together, if you have never smoked, you never miss it, right? If you've never drunk, you never miss it, right? Because you have no connection in it. You are dead. You know, you are dead toward that direction. So, and that's exactly what happens. You see now, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, they were actually surrounded in an environment of sin and uh, they had the cravings as you to be introduced to something that would have enslaved them but now they became alive the word of god that was in them was alive and you know what alive does it makes them it defines them and they believed in the definition of who God told them they were. So they were alive in the word of God. But now, that one, the more the word of God in them, made the flesh more and more weak and dead. Right? They could have made the option of taking that. But now, they said, I have never defined myself in such things and I am not planning to do that. Why? Simply because my God says this is not right. The light in me tells me, the life in me, you know, you know, it, it becomes, you know, you if you are alive in something, then that's part and parcel of you. Right? If sin is alive in our bodies, that's the reason why we are we become sinners, simply because we respond to our flesh. Right? But now, if the word of God is the one that takes privilege, uh, you know, precedence in our life then we become alive in the word of God. Now, look at it this way. So, Daniel, Shedrach, and Abednego, being surrounded by evil, they became alive by the word of God. And that way, now they became dead to the surrounding that was, that they said to, the, to the, what was happening around them. You see? Now, they did not even, they, they, they did not desire the delicacies of the king. Right? Look at it this way. At the king gets the best. Right, and they had that notion in their mind, but because they were alive in the word of God, even the best, as long as it is worldly and is divined by word of God, as it has been defiled, 
then that one they said I cannot connect myself with anything that has been that is going to defile me. You see, they knew they were clean, they knew they were special because they knew they are the children of God. So they knew who they are. And now they knew even Nebuchadnezzar is can he can never be anywhere, even near to, to, to God when it comes to my God when it comes to hierarchies and all these things. So they were in there, yes, they were in slavery, right? But they were free because even Nebuchadnezzar could not even co co convince them to do what? To eat something that they knew was not right. You see? So they were in, they were in Egypt, right? In Egypt, in, 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 in slavery, right? In the captivity, let's talk about captivity. In that captivity, they were in captivity in Egypt, but yet they did never, they never succumbed to any of the rules and regulations of that nation. And that's the reason why now, when you show God that you, that you are alive in Him, then He comes and supports His work. That's the reason why, even when they were thrown in the lake of in the in the in the in the, in the, in the furnace, there is nothing they could do because they, you know, they depended on the promise of God, right? They depended upon the promise of God, knowing that God is able to do what? To protect them. So they were very much alive in God that now even sin and fear, because you see, uh, sin is the one that brings fear. There is no fear in love. There is no fear in God. Because we are not being given the spirit of fear. We've been given the spirit of God. So, so that it brings us to another country. It brings us now to another level whereby now, despite the fact that we are in the world, right? then they can never be contaminated by sin simply because they understood by choice that they are children of God. Now, let, it, let us bring to ourselves now, we are surrounded by a body that is full of sin. Galatians chapter 6 and chapter 5, we have seen all those the acts of the flesh, right? And the Bible clearly tells us that those who do such acts will never follow the, will never inherit the kingdom of God. So around us, what surrounds us is all sin. But now, Knowing our identity that we are alive in Christ ought to put us in a situation whereby we can say no to any form of unrighteousness, as we saw in the book of uh, Titus chapter, chapter 2 verse 10, that the grace of God has shown to all men. What does this grace do? It teaches us to say no to any form of unrighteousness. You see? So to be alive in God, even in our flesh, just like Daniel was surrounded by environment of sin, but he decided not to, allow, to be to, to, to let himself be a slave to, because if he could have accepted Nebuchadnezzar's food, all those pastries and everything good, they would have now become a slave of Nebuchadnezzar, right? But they decided we can never combine, we can never accept to be defiled by things of a king whom we know, right? Because our king, God, is mightier than this man. So once they knew that, then they held on to that faith, then God never disappointed. Because true love never disappoints. You see? So that's what I'm saying. So what I'm saying is that being alive in ourselves, being alive of knowing that we have been, we have been, we have been, we have been freed from the, from, from the acts of the world. That is the kingdom, the things of the kingdom of the world, the fleshly activities, sin. Then that one gives us that ability not to go back again and try to start doing what we did. If you've never tried something, you can never miss it, right? If you've never tried things like uh, drinking and all these other things, things that are, you know, or any sin that is, is, is talked about in the book of, uh, in, in, in Galatians 5, then you can never miss it. You are still dead to it. So don't even attempt to try to go and touch that thing. But now the other thing is that God comes and then changes us and gives us as a new identity and gives us the strength. Even the sins that now we have repented, then also we become dead to them. And out of, out of living, you know, out of a practical example, the things that you are saved from when you became the children of God, up to right now, we never have even privileges for such things again. Because God has given us that ability to die to that sin and to be alive in, in the Lordship of Jesus Christ because we are no longer slaves to that sin. And we are now alive just in, a, in a Christ as children of God. So, yeah, that's what I wanted to add on what just uh, you guys have said, which is very powerful. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Does anyone else have anything to add? Vincent, how do you feel about all this?
or I think we just need now to stay firm and to, and also we need to keep we need to, to keep in our minds what can to slavery so that and have that wisdom to keep us so that we may keep ourselves stand away from those sins that we know that will bring us to Amen. That is true. As both Pastor Charles and Steve were speaking, I kind of just thought of like the whole of what freedom is. And I kind of just feel like freedom is dying to your old self, humbling yourself and knowing the actual truth of God. That is the actual freedom. And that's how like that's how I view it now as you guys were speaking such powerful word and explaining it and I was just like yeah like freedom that is freedom to me or at least how is it how you guys explained it it's dying to your old self humbling yourself and trusting in God and trusting in the word of God trusting what he can do and since you're humbling yourself you leave it all to God and forgive me like because he says somewhere I forgot where he says but the yoke he bears is easy it's like not heavy so what he gives you is nothing that you cannot handle and you are not wandering anymore as you were to your old self you are now have a plan God's gonna get you to that plan and you are going to live a prosperous a life full of hope and the future, like it says in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, for he you knows the plans for us. And I feel like that's just how freedom is to me and how you guys all spoke about it and how we shouldn't take this freedom so lightly that we should keep wanting to seek him more due to this freedom that he had carried all of this burden for us, that he had even shed his blood for us that he gave us this freedom to actually be free and now we can share it with others so they can be free. Oh, thank you, Steve. <laughs> Matthew 11, verse 20, 29. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. Thank you, Steve. That's the exact verse that I was thinking of, too. <laughs> so. See how good he is? Like, even just from me reading that, you can see he's like, come to me. I will carry all of this. I will carry out. I'm All you who are broken hearted, all you, those who are weary and burdened, I will give you the rest that you've been seeking. I will take that burden you have and you will learn from me. You will learn what is good you will learn that i'm gentle i'm humble in heart and you will find rest and the true rest that you need is in him and nobody else and i feel like i just feel like <laughs> like praising him and just thanking him so much because of how kind-hearted how gentle and how humble he is in his heart that he's willing to take all of our burdens he's willing to suffer for us so so that we could be free does anyone else have anything else to add <laughs> I, I just that word burden i um as i conclude is that um I, mm. when i when i when you when you mentioned it i was lingering my mind there
Hello. Yeah. Is. Oh yeah. I mean, if, yeah. So you can either pick up a little. Let me just take some time. Okay. Um. This. Yeah. That's. Uh. Yeah. One of the things that we talked about. Um, the burden when you were talking about the word burden. Let me just. Uh, people in your read. Let me know. Mm -hmm. What do you understand by burden? No. What's a burden? Mm. It's a weight or a load that you know carrying it. It becomes tiresome. Right, and uh, you know, burdens. Oh, what do you understand? Uh, somebody, did you want to say, uh, Steve? Or uh, I mean, um, Vincent, did you say something? Oh, no, oh, okay. So, a burden it's a load, typically a heavy one, something that is quite heavy, right? And uh, you know. We have burdens of life sometimes, and this burden sometimes come as a result of us not trusting God. We create the burden, and they come as a result of worry. We are sometimes worried so much. Oh, I'm looking at this, I'm worried. I'm not. Worried. You know, every time we find ourselves, we are worried, and then it takes a focus of who God is. You see. So like what you're seeing here, the word the verse says is come to me, all who are burdened, who, who are weary. Because you see, burden can actually make us become so much weary. So one of the things is that the burden of sin, sin on its own is a burden. Right? Sin on its own, it's a burden. Right? Now look at it this way. For example, if somebody is, uh, let's say if somebody is uh, using some, let's say like, for example, substance that actually is hooked up to this substance. Right, you find this person, even when it is very much cold in the house, he will come out and go and smoke something, or maybe you know he's gonna do something so that he can appease his body. You see, you cannot sleep. No, you see, like now, for example, um, if you are self controlled in one way or another, there are some things that people struggle, right? Especially fleshly things, they struggle so much that actually sometimes some people do say, man, I cannot sleep without doing this and that and that and that. I cannot sleep. I cannot stay without drinking or I cannot stay without this. I have to look for something in the house, you know, to, for me just to drink, you know, simply because he's already, already, uh, he's already enslaved to that. You see? Now, that's why Jesus says, all these things that are actually taking a lot of your energy that you don't even concentrate to know whom I am, right? Because these burdens are the ones that the devil gives us so that we may not even think about them. To think that it is impossible, right, to live without because they become part and parcel of us. You see? Uh, they, so that's the reason why they, you, you find somebody doing things again and again. He knows it is bad, yet he continues doing it. And even if it, he knows that it is bad, they do it even hiding, simply because they know it is bad. So you see, if, if you know so well something is bad, why do you have to do it hiding? If the, if the government says it's not right, why do people do it hiding? So that's the reason why it is a burden. Sin is a burden. You see what I'm talking about? But you see now, when Christ takes that over, now when you when you give your life to Jesus Christ, now you come from the slavery of substance now to the freedom of God himself. Right? He already took it at the cross. Right? And then now that's the reason why you hear he say that we find right? You shall find rest, as in all those things you give to him in exchange of righteousness. So you feel, by the way, even when the time you are born again, and then you feel that now you are, you know, you are a child of God, God has taken, you know, you are now under the, you are under the, 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 the lordship of Jesus Christ. Actually, we used to feel very, very relieved because I'm forgiven. All those patterns of thinking I've seen the Genesis, I did something which was very much bad. I come to realize I'm forgiven. I know that now I'm the child of God and I'm protected by him. And you know, no, no weapon cast against me shall ever prosper. All these things, those words that give us by faith, we proclaim by faith. So that's what I'm talking about. Steve, are you there? Yeah. Yeah, Sorry. go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I was just holding uh, on you to continue. Yeah. No, I think I think you actually I love it because you just I you went through that that word burden because um I I like I saw it come in uh, Galatians yeah. and 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 I saw how the warning is to the church of of or maybe the Galatians and, yeah. and and I kept thinking of us even our times that 
that then even though that we we realize that um let me let me post them there and then i'll i'll do a quick summary of what we've been looking at oh it'll be too tiny to find those oh maybe you guys wouldn't be able to see them on your phone but um this is what since we started this is what the spirit of the lord has been walking us to all these scriptures and and, and i'm so in i see how playing and how almost they're yeah connect like the way you know we were studying about the ligament connecting every part i feel how all of them are connected words borrowing here connecting to, they are mentioned here and then you see how they're related here so the first time i saw that word burden was in galatians 5 1 as we uh vincent was reading that and and, and i saw the the warning there uh it is for freedom that christ has set us free galatians 5 1 stand firm um you know stand firm and and then and do not let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery so salvation i feel it calls this freedom lifestyle is calling us to to a freedom you know being set free to a freedom becoming a servant uh you can see that in first peter 2 16 connecting all those verses together so but do not use your freedom to cover up so remain oh there's a part missing there um remain uh, as free men leave a servant of god so i see how a servant of god is being told to stand firm and not to let himself back again to the burden again by a yoke of slavery because then that place has no rest to the soul uh has no rest to the soul and yet this last verse here i feel like when i put it in there i feel like i that's almost like a summarized a uh, verse of so if the sun sets you free you'll be free indeed and then, and then i hear the sun saying as he was saying that verse in john 8 36 i hear him almost say come to me why because if the sun sets you free you'll be free indeed come to me so in john 8 36 i could hear that echo almost saying come to me come to me all you are weary and and burden but even the burdens that actually these people would not perceive is just that you know the burden of just keep doing this over and over and my soul doesn't get rest i mean it's 2020 i mean the year is almost gone and, and, and can you imagine not having a rest even in 2020 where your soul found rest you 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 took the burdens and then you were weary with this and this and you you know you were able to take the yoke, um, you know, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Will there be another 2021, God willing? Will it be another place where my soul will be burdened and not get rest? Yet, yet the call is come to me. Why? I am the son who is able to set you free, and you'll be free indeed. That free indeed is equivalent of in your soul having rest um being able to serve being a servant of god like as we've seen you know a good example as we saw daniel shadow meshach and abed you know being in a place that actually is yoked with a lot of burden but they actually stand in firm you know they are standing firm in all those scriptures and examples i put them there because they they really highlighted everything that um i will conclude there but that word burden is i felt like you know it, it's easy it's good being called to be free but also being vigilant so that in your servant of god or being servant of god as we see examples of daniel how they remain servants i mean they really stood firm that they never found anything connecting themselves again to the babylon uh, environment but they stood out and became men who actually the new testament will call them or maybe they will reveal them you know people like daniel in, in the book of hebrews you know they, they are connected to the new testament because of their reference calling from the freedom and you would ask myself how come you're saying stephen they were free and they're in babylon how about being out of babylon was free no it's because they practice the kingdom of god they practice righteousness in a captivity situation that to me now looks more freedom because you don't have to be in an environment out you know physically to actually say oh i'm free i think that's my summary i'm being blessed by that and i posted for anyone who came right just to see what we were studying there god bless you all
Amen. Thank you. Does anyone else have anything else to say before we pray? Well, thank you, Steve. You summarized it <laughs> much. You took the words out of my mouth and much more better explained than my head could do it. <laughs> so I thank you. Um, so I would like for us to end in prayer. So would anyone like to volunteer to pray for us tonight? Okay. I will volunteer today. Thank you, Pastor Charles. Yeah, yeah, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this moment you've given us first, Lord. I want to thank you for your word, Lord. We you know your power, your word is power. Your word is everything. We lift up your holy mighty name uh, for this moment that you've given us first, Lord. Giving us bread, bread, bread of life, Lord. Lord, we want to thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit. We felt the presence of the Holy Spirit, Lord, and as you help us, Lord, understand this word. Help us, O oh Lord, that this word may find root in our hearts, Lord, to change us to become who you want us to be. Help us, O oh Lord, depend upon you, O oh Lord. Remind us that, Lord, we died to sin so that, Lord, we may be alive in you. Remind us that, Lord, you have sent, you already given us the Holy Spirit to help us, O oh Lord, even to keep in step with the word, with your word, Lord. We pray that, Lord, may give us that ability to realize that, Lord, we are in your kingdom. We are the children of the kingdom of God, Lord. And as we continue displaying your kingdom here on earth, oh Lord, as we continue witnessing about the greatness of your word and the greatness of the work that you've done upon our lives, oh Lord, I pray that, Lord, you may give us the same spirit of boldness, oh Lord, that we can go out there and play about the wonderful things that you've done upon our lives, even to the world that you've sent you, Lord. May you continue preparing, oh Lord, people to accept you more and more, Lord, because you are the only one who has the true life. You are the only one who has the true word that is able to set people free, oh Lord. Lord, your kingdom shall never perish, Lord. It's a kingdom that is that will endure forever, Lord. I pray that, Lord, even as you continue saving many from the kingdom of darkness, oh Lord, as you continue uh, um, taking the Lord of many people, oh Lord, I pray that you may cause them to come even to accepting you as their path of Savior, so that Lord, they may experience the, 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 the freedom that you've given us, that we are experiencing, oh Lord. But your name be glorified. Continue sustaining us, O Lord, in the kingdom of God, O Lord, that in all what we do, Lord, remind us that we are your children, Lord, that we are there, we are out there to reflect your glory and even to represent your personality, Lord. Give us that more love, love for our neighbors, Lord, and even to love our friends, Lord, that just the way we love, uh, the way we love, you have shown us how to love, Lord. Because, Lord, you love us so much that you gave your son to die for us, Lord. I want to thank you for that gift of salvation that you've given, you've given us, Lord. As we go, oh Lord, in our places, so in our homes, oh Lord, and even as we take this, uh, we, we finish this uh, program, Lord, I pray that we bless each other. Even those ones who are, did not make it today because they are caught up in different issues, Lord, I pray that we bless them, Lord, and we extend them. Bless each and every listener that is going to listen to this program, oh Lord, that Lord, it may go and even uh, enrich their heart, oh Lord, so that they, may, they can see that we are all, that they are free in you, oh Lord, that they can find the freedom, oh Lord, that they're looking for. Only you, Lord. I want to thank you for worship and lift up your holy mighty name. Be with us, O Lord, and guide and protect us in everything we do. Let's pray, trusting and believing in you through Christ the Lord and let pray. Amen. 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 Now may the grace, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ. and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now. Us now. And forevermore. Amen. 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 All right. Hi. God bless you guys. God bless you. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. It was wonderful. <laughs> it was all God. Continue to leave us free, man. Yeah, we need to be free. <laughs> you are guys free from this Bible study. <laughs> <laughs>